So Notion just released 28 updates in six categories, including a brand new page layout. When was the last time they actually did this? Never. So let's explore these game-changing features, shall we? The Notion sidebar now has a fresh, unique home icon, and you can make this your default home page with up to six customizable widgets, just like Lego blocks. I've enabled four, but then th there's a twist. Keep watching. So currently you can't rearrange these widgets. And at the top, you will see your recently visited pages as tiles. The upcoming events feature includes your Notion calendar in Notion itself. So now you can see your Google Calendar events right within Notion and you can join calls directly from here. What's more, you can display all of your calendars or just a specific one. And you can also filter only to show events with participants, conference details or locations alone. So I've decided to keep it to three days and for all events that are there in all of my Google calendars. So for the first time, I can integrate different database tasks into one space with my tasks. This is from all over the place, all different types of databases. It defaults to a list view, but then that can be changed. You can filter, sort, and see which database each task comes from and group these entries by the task database. To maintain uniformity, it only displays certain details, the task name, the status, the deadline, and of course, the source, and finally, the person assigned. And you can switch on some system properties, like when it was created and when it was last modified and by whom. Now, in order to define a new task database, you can just click on the ellipsis near the new button. You can choose or create properties for status, the assignee, and the due date which are common fields. And if you no longer want it in the My Tasks view, you can easily disconnect it. The next widget lets you pin specific database views. Now I've made two, one for quick access to favorite pages, to projects, and to external websites. And the other one is to capture new video ideas. The good thing is you can add as many views as you want, and that gives endless possibilities. So let's say you're a Notion for Teams user you'll get to see trending and suggested pages in your view in addition to all these views. Let's talk about navigation. So there's this new pin tabs feature. Now this is a brilliant feature which allows you to bookmark your most used tabs in Notion. And these bookmark tabs will automatically open when you start the app and are just with a page icon, no text. What I really love about this is that you can also reorder your bookmarked and unpinned tabs. Now Notion uses a particular order. It keeps the bookmarked items on the left and the unpinned items on the right. So one of my favorite features is Notion's hidden table of contents. So you have these headlines, right? Headline one, headline two, and headline three. And it displays these all as dashes on the right hand side. So when you hover your mouse, the table of contents pops up and the current position of the cursor is shown in blue. The brilliant thing is it stays in the same spot even as you scroll up or down. So previously, if you opened the shared and the private pages on the left panel and they were too long, it made it really hard to navigate through a huge list of items. Now there's this more button that splits them into two panes. Now you can pin this second pane and sort it for easier navigation. Now you can collapse the main sections in the sidebar. I'm talking about favorites, team spaces, shared, and the private sections. So you just see the headers and you don't see the details. And what's more, you can also reorder them as you like. Now there's this new inbox for updates and notifications that they've introduced, again, on the left side panel. And you can lock the pane, mark notifications as red, individually or all at once, and archive the red ones. What's brilliant is you can see a filter for just the unread, the archived, or all workspace updates. So previously, only the checkbox property could be narrowed to a single character width, leading many of us to use this as a workaround. Now all you need to do is to press down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on Windows, and you can freely adjust the column width. So let's say you add an external link in Notion. You can now paste this as a mention. So when you hover around this particular mention, it shows you the title and thumbnail 
Now there's this user interface above the database. It's been cleaned up to show only icons. So the filter and sort are now represented as icons. And we already had the iconized automations and search. So let's say you select text to edit. The entire edit panel has been redesigned. And this is much more visually pleasing. I've covered this in far more detail in the earlier video. The feature for creating a new page is now conveniently located at the top of the side panel. And when you click on it, it opens up a new cleaner page layout. So that gives you access to new templates for a to-do list, a weekly plan, and a journal. And Notion, of course, has added its Ask AI feature. And by default, the table is the standard database type that you get to access as well. But if you want other database types, you just click on these dots at the end of the row. So previously, editing images was a chore, was done outside of Notion. But now Notion lets you crop images directly. The brilliant thing is you can crop to custom sizes or predefined shapes. That way, your visuals can look far more professional. So previously, you could just embed PDFs. Now that was great. But now Notion lets you import PDFs as text. Let me tell you why it's helpful. This allows you to extract and edit text and images easily. Notion automations just got a facelift. Now it allows you to duplicate an entire automation. You click on this ellipsis and select duplicate. And you can then modify the duplicate as needed. Let's say you're inside an automation with multiple steps. Now you can duplicate a step within the automation as well. So click on the ellipsis in do this and select duplicate above or below. For me, these are fantastic features, allowing me to spend less time in creating the automation. Now this one is brilliant. Notion's automations works directly in my tasks database in home. So all I do is go to the origin database and I can assign it automatically to a person or insert today's date. A little bit of history here. The My Tasks database originated from the Project and Task database template that Notion introduced months ago. It has two hidden features, managing sprints and tasks with dependencies. So now you get to use both of these. Simply go and turn on the sprints and the dependencies, and you can use them. This is regarding notifications. So whenever an automation is executed in Notion, Notion has set up a new notification to notify specific people or the person in the assignee property that you have set up in the database. Notion also added three new formulae, a mean, a median, and today. Now I did an earlier video where I covered all of the formulae in greater detail. Just take a look there. Now Notion didn't stop here. It also added features for other devices like your mobile and your iPad. The best thing that happened is Notion Home now works on the iPad, even though there is no native Notion calendar yet for the iPad. The Ask AI feature now comes to the mobile. So you can just click on Ask AI from right within the Notion mobile app. Finally, let's talk about Notion Calendar. The Notion Calendar got a small update. It now has a focus time and an out of office feature. This is a great addition for people who love productivity and for those who work in teams. So the out of office feature can automatically say no to meetings. Don't miss those formula updates I talked about. Watch this video now. Or if you want to boost your Notion formula skills, you should also watch this video.